there, jumping fluently. Not so Scorpion Sid, who hit it hard. And seizes the initiative on Reef, and we've lost Teresina Alvarez, has unseated Jason Watson. It's too late to catch the fallen jockey. We need to start preparing him for the fall. So yeah, the net will always be there, that's what we do. But we need to really kind of structure ourselves to say, right, have we prepared him, her, to take the next impact? Because in that snapshot, there's going to be a fall. The stronger you can make your body and the fitter you are, I think it, it definitely, you're fitter to take a fall. Now, obviously, some falls are worse than others. But if, you, if your body is physically strong and physically fit, I definitely think it has a massive impact. I've noticed the jockeys believe they're fit. They come in and they'll, they'll say, like, oh, I'm running every single day, I'm riding out, I'm riding five blocks in the morning, thinking that that's maintaining their weight or maintaining their fitness level. When you come and ask them to do something as simple as a squat or to use the bike or to work at a higher intensity on the bike, they're blowing really hard. They just don't have the enough endurance and these type of exercises are really telling for a jockey. You have to really, really show that they have little bits of weakness in, in key muscle areas that are involved in racing. Like when I first started, I was doing a lot of power walking and running and stuff. I mean, I feel I get a lot more benefit from circuit training because you're doing sharp, sharp things and then you're, you're working on a different area and you're you're keeping your heart rate up and you know I feel you get as much out of, out of that than I would for going for a run. It sort of breaks it up and it's a bit like interval training for horses, you know. The best analogy I can use is the rugby players. They train their bodies to take impact. But that impact is only against another human being. A jockey is has never trained his body to take impact. He rides out and he race rides and then he is going to be taking impact at 35 miles an hour with a half a tonne of horse. And it's not against another human, it's going to be against the ground. I'm not saying that we're changing jockey body shapes to be rugby players, but we can get in the composition of their body stronger, preparing the, the jockey's body to be more flexible. When they are injured, they're going to rehab quicker. A couple of years ago, I mean, I broke a collarbone and did a few other little things. And I mean, obviously I was in Jack Perry House within a week and a half and because I'd been going in there beforehand, I was back racing within three and a half weeks. Many people would perhaps see the injured jockeys fund as, well, you only go there if you're injured. I think it's important to keep on top of your fitness. There is a lot more jockeys now going to use the gym while fully fit, but just to get that edge. Sports like cycling and that, I mean, they always talk about marginal gains. Well, if you're fitter and you're stronger and you're, you're mind sharper, you might just ride a horse differently. It can only be a benefit. I like to use a lot of boxing to get their heart rate up, to help them sweat, high intensity interval training sessions. So it's a resistance type exercise. It's very enjoyable coming here, not sweating and losing a bit of weight. You know, you're actually enjoying it as well. And they've got everything here. I wouldn't do it by myself, I'll be quite honest. You had this myth that muscle is heavier than fat and essentially that's just a get out clause I think. The more sort of sports science has developed over the years and it's proven that it, it's not that much different and you know you can still go and lift weights as long as you're doing it correctly. I've certainly no heavier, if not, I'm probably a bit lighter and probably have more muscle but in place I didn't have muscle. You're strong enough to take a fall then. In the right way, in the correct way of training, you'll keep the weight off. You're doing impact stuff, so you're already loading your bones, so making your bones stronger. And that, when your bones are loaded, that's when they, they really want to suck up the nutrients, which you're now engaging with, with a high-protein, low-carb diet. Generally, you're getting a fall towards the end of a race where you could be fatigued. The stronger you are, the fitter you are. Things you might do might prevent the horse from falling. From a, a performance point of view, the jockey will be not just fitter, but their mindset will be right on course to be, you know, that elite athlete thinking before they get on the saddle for that, for that race. They've primed themselves, they know what they're doing. They're hydrated enough, so they're not gonna be tired and their fitness will take them across the line, ready to compete for the next time. There's no excuse nowadays for not being fit enough. It's just pure laziness if you're not, because we are very, very lucky in this country that we've got Jack Berry House, Oaksley House, and Sir Peter O'Sullivan House, all tailor-made for jockeys with the best, their best interests at heart, absolutely free, with the best people in them, you know, that are only there to help you 
you know, be the best jockey you can be. So if you're not taking advantage of that, that's not costing you anything, then you've only got one person to blame.